Good afternoon, friends. Uh, welcome to the Strategic Air Command and Aerospace Museum. I'm your curious curator, Brian York, and I'm here to talk about the C-119. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do our aircraft adventure this month, but we want to share it with you now. Uh, behind me now is the big bird, the C-119 flying boxcar. Where did this airplane come from? Uh, now, I can tell you where this specific one came from. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The aircraft itself was built by Fair, Fairchild Aircraft, which the company started in 1924, made aircraft all the way through 2003. Some of their notable aircraft are the PT-19, primary train aircraft for World War II, the C-119 from the Cold War, and the A-10 Warthog currently being used today. But how was this airplane really developed? It actually goes back to the C-82 packet, which was uh, designed in the late World War II to replace a lot of the cargo aircraft that had been taken out of commercial airline service, weren't really designed for cargo uh, aircraft type things. The C-82, uh, though, had some difficulties. Uh, the cockpit wasn't in a good place. It didn't carry as big a load as they want to. Plus, they didn't get it into operation until 1945, almost when the, world, when the war was all over. Uh, now, how does that relate to Nebraska? Why am I talking about it? I'm talking about it because in 1948, 1949 winter, there was such a huge succession of blizzards that 29 counties in Western Nebraska got virtually cut off. And in those 29 counties, there were 1.5 million head of cattle and sheep that needed to get fed. And so the Air National Guard utilizing C-47s, C-46s, and C-82s delivered over 240 tons of hay out into the middle of nowhere. The C-82 was really instrumental because they could take the rear doors off and just push the hay straight out and get it really close to where the animals were. But how does that relate to the C-119? Well, it, it's, it's a new version of the C-82, but you can't really call it C-82 2.0. Largely because you don't do that with airplanes. You call them C-82 A model, B model, F model. But the C-119 was a dramatic change. Now, the C-82 in the cockpit, it was actually centered over the cargo area, which limited how much cargo you could get in there. Plus, it made the nose section much longer, it made it harder to fly. Another challenge they had with the C-82 were the engines. Now, the C-119, what Fairchild did is they completely redesigned the airplane. They moved the cockpit, as you can see, forward. So your nose section is not as long, easier to fly. It also opens up your cargo space. It makes it a lot larger. What they also did is they strengthened and widened the cargo space to get more cargo, heavier cargo. The C-119 more than doubled the amount of cargo that the aircraft could carry over the C-82. Now the engines, if you look back here, we've got the Pratt & Whitney 4360 radial engines. These will generate 3,500 horsepower each. You got two of them, 7,000 horsepower to help carry heavy loads. You've got greater thrust, equaling into a greater lift, which are two of your four forces of flight. And that helped out whereas the C-82 had the Pratt & Whitney 2800 that only generated 2100 horsepower. That's 4200 horsepower compared to 7000 horsepower. But then as you come back, you'll see how much larger the cargo space really is. All right, here we are in the cavernous well of a C-119 cargo bay. As you can see, it's set up for a couple different things. One is we've got stretchers along the wall, and then we've got these rails on the floor. The stretchers obviously is for a medevac. The aircraft had a lot of different uh, optional uses. Uh, they can medevac up to, for the C-119, up to 35 wounded personnel. In the cargo area on the floor, you see the rails. This is to facilitate moving crates or pallets all the way to the back. And as you see, as the aircraft has a very box design, uh, much like a rail car or a box car. So that's why it's known as a flying box car. 
So the cargo could be loaded straight in and made it a lot simpler to rotate that in. It was also used a lot for troop transport uh, and for paratroopers. They, on the doors on the back, they have two doors uh, on the side. So the paratroopers have an easy exit out through there uh, and pulling their parachutes out. You can also have the doors removed on a mission and you can push your cargo straight out and have it drop a uh, parachute down to the ground. Uh, what was also interesting is some of the C-119s were converted into what was known as an AC-119G gunship, also known as the Shadow. And what they would do is you have the windows, or very, very much like portals, on the side, and on one side of the aircraft they would fill those with guns. And they would usually be remotely operated, they're targeted for a certain altitude, and the aircraft would then fly in these large circles, tilted down, firing down and supporting troops on the ground or taking out enemy positions on the ground. Uh, it's a technique that is still used today by some other aircraft, uh, but the C-119 and the C-47 used these also, but the C-119 was very, very well used for this. Now, as you notice, you've also got the cockpit which still seems to be upwards, but it is at the nose of the aircraft, which as I talked about, opens everything up to fit more cargo in. Now, one of the other things that the aircraft was used for is in Vietnam, they really developed the remotely piloted drone reconnaissance aircraft. And what they would do is they, it would fly low and slow over enemy sites taking pictures. So it's great reconnaissance. It's unpiloted, so there's no danger uh, to a crew member. To recover though, they would fly out over friendly territory or over water, fly it up higher, deploy a chute, and then they would come along and catch it. The C-119 was the aircraft that they used to test and train for that service. They would later use helicopters actually to pull those in but the C-119 was very useful. Also, during this uh, same time period, the Corona Satellite Reconnaissance System was developed. Now, the Corona Satellite was launched in space. It fly, you know, floats overhead, goes around its orbit, and can take pictures. But at that time, we didn't have these wonderful uh, wireless handheld devices to capture all these photos right away. They actually had to drop film back down to get developed. Now, how do you recover that film as it's being dropped from outer space? Well, as it goes down, it's designed to be grabbed by an aircraft. And it was the C-119 that was specifically chosen to grab that and come back down and bring it back to Earth and get it developed. Uh, they also could drop it in the ocean, which was, of course, difficult because now you gotta go find it. Uh, what was interesting about the Chrome Satellite is they actually put a little salt plug in the capsule that held the film that in two days would dissolve and it would sink so it wouldn't get into any, any enemy hands. Uh, but the C-119 was very good at doing this job uh, until new technologies developed that they no longer had to return film back to Earth. Now, one of the other interesting aspects of the C-119 is the twin boom design of the tail. Now, the twin boom is different than, say, a twin tail or a twin fuselage. Twin tail is more like a B-25. A twin fuselage is like the F-82 twin Mustang. The twin boom offers great advantage in keeping your tail up above your cargo space so full-size trucks, covered trucks, could back all the way up to the cargo space of the aircraft and load and unload easily, uh, especially with the clamshell-type doors and it gives a, a greater aspect as far as trying to uh, send your paratroopers out of the rear of the aircraft. So why don't we use the C-119 today? Well, there's a lot of reasons. One, Fairchild came up with a C-123, which carried heavier loads, more passengers, and incorporated a tail ramp to the aircraft design rather than the clamshell doors. Now also at that same time was being developed was the C-130 by Lockheed, which incorporated all those same features and heavier loads, but jet engines played a part. You had the C-5 come out, 
which carried hundreds of thousands of pounds of cargo and hundreds of passengers all the way up to the C-17, which we still use today, which can carry big loads on short runways and also uh, incorporates the jet engines within that with greater range. That's what we have for the C-119 today. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and joining us for this aircraft adventure. Please look for us down the road for more informational videos as they come out.